Dr. Neelam Arora, our esteemed uh, speaker for today, uh, Dr. Praveen Clement, uh, OSD, NSSL University of Mumbai, also the district coordinator of Mumbai Western Zone, uh, Shri Sushil Shinde, sir, faculty members, NSS program officers, and all my dear NSS volunteers uh, from different colleges across University of Mumbai. I extend a very warm welcome to all of you for the university level webinar on uh, awareness on stem cell registration, uh, which is organized by NSS unit of Lala Lajpat Rai College in collaboration with NSS cell University of Mumbai and Marrow Donor Registry of India, MDRI. Uh, I once again welcome all of you. And to begin with, I would uh, like to request our technical team uh, to kindly give us good start to the program uh, by uh, uh, going uh, through the virtual lamp lighting and uh, beginning of this program. Abhay? all the participants to kindly mute themselves. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on. Ma'am, you are on mute. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, now am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, next I would like to request our technical team once again uh, to kindly uh, play the NSS song and I would like to request all the participants to kindly rise up uh, for the NSS song. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Abhay. Now, I would like to request our uh, principal, Madam, Dr. Neela Marora, to kindly present her welcome address. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, hello. Good evening, everyone. And uh, at the offset, I'd like to thank uh, University of Mumbai and all the persons from University of Mumbai who are attending this program. And of course, to our NSS team for organizing on such a very, very uh, a topic which is uh, not really a topic, which is something uh, stem cells and uh, a donation of human organ, which only human beings can do. And because we cannot get this from any other person, we are the only ones who are going to be the receivers and givers. So I'm sure that uh, when I remember when uh, I had gone for one cremation and uh, there a beautiful line was written that Chakshudan Aapke jane ke baad dunya aapki aankho se koi aur dekhega. So when we, when we die, the organs of no use to us. And when we are alive also, like blood donations, stem cell donations, we can do. So we should make every effort to save other human life. And uh, a lot of aversion is there in the mind of the people about uh, organs, uh, organ donation. But let me tell you, even I remember when my mother died, she used to always say, we want to do, I want to donate my eyes. When she, she died in the hospital, in spite of our grief, we called the doctor and we got the eyes donated. So, at least we, we felt good that someone will benefit and a blind person will be able to see because of the donation which has been done. So, organ donation is uh, really, really required in our country where so many people suffer from so many deficiencies. So I will urge the students and all, we should pledge whatever we can do in order to promote this concept, we should do. So I congratulate the um, NSS team for taking this initiative to start uh, an awareness program. So all the best and thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for those encouraging words. Uh, moving ahead, I would now like to request uh, Shri Sushil Shinde, sir, OSD, NSSL, University of Mumbai, and uh, District Coordinator, Western Zone, uh, to please address the gathering. Thank you, okay, madam, for giving me a chance to speak to all people, young people of this nation, and those energetic people who can do wonders 
for them this awareness kind of lecture is arranged by lala lachpatrai college i would like to thank first of all the principal dr neela marora uh, for giving a platform uh, for all those nss volunteers who are there in university to get benefit of this lecture today i know uh, mr klimet uh, earlier also we had met in college and for this Uh, especially uh, stem cell registry uh, as uh, rightly said that when you give something to someone else and the life is changed that is the biggest gift you are giving and let me tell you madam spoke about organ donation it is as good as giving life to someone else okay so main to kahunga ki मरने के बाद जब हम लोग अपने बॉडी के ऊपर के जितने भी गहने हैं निकाल कर दे देते हैं ले लेते हैं दे देते नहीं है ले ले लेते हैं वैसे उससे भी बड़े अलंकार अपने बॉडी में होते हैं उसके बारे में ऑर्गन डोनेशन के बारे में होना ही चाहिए पर जिंदा रहते रहते स्टेम सेल रजिस्ट्री कर कर किसी कैंसर पेशेंट को बचाना ये भी बहुत बड़ी बात है मरने के बाद तो मुझे पता नहीं कि मेरे बॉडी का क्या होगा लोग ऑर्गन डोनेशन करने के लिए मैंने तो कंसेंट दे दिया पर मेरे अगर रिश्तेदार मुझे बोलेंगे कि नहीं भाई इसका कुछ रह जाएगा इधर उसको भेज ही देते पूरा पैक करके तो इट डिपेंड्स पर मैं जिंदा रहकर अगर किसी की हेल्प कर सकूं ऐसा कोई बड़ी बात नहीं है एक तो रक्तदान करते हैं या फिर प्लेटलेट डोनेशन करते हैं ये हम लोग जिंदा रहकर किसी को कर सकते हैं और उसी तरह से स्टेम सेल रजिस्ट्री भी करना एक बहुत बड़ी बात है स्टेम सेल रजिस्ट्री का जितना मुझे ज्ञान है मुझे जितना भी मैं प्रिवेंट लिमिट से सुना हूँ इसके पहले के सेशंस में दो पीपल हु आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम कैंसर दे सम और समटाइम दे रिक्वायर दिस काइंड ऑफ ट्रांसप्लांट आई डू थिंक सो एम आई करेक्ट प्रवीण आई शुड नॉट बी रॉन्ग साइंटिफिकली and for that there should be a database of people the genetic coding and other things should be done so if any person who is suffering from leukemia or something like that and he requires a bone marrow transplant correct at that time there should be a match a blood donor when he donates he donates according to that donor groups a a positive a negative and something like that but to match with the bone marrow there is more difficult chances and for that our country should make those databases of those genetic constituent of any person and then if any person requires it at that time this kind of information can be given and Uh, it is a lifetime chance to save someone who is suffering from a, um, a disease called as cancer at that time if you come uh, useful for someone it would be very great and those person who are uh, cancer patients wo log pehle hi apni jeene ki aas kho chuke hote hain unke liye agar aap ek aasha ka kiran bad kar jate ho as a donor it would be more than like a god for them so ये एक अच्छा प्रयास है लाला लाजपत राय कॉलेज का इट्स अ वेरी गुड एफर्ट बाय यू टू ऑर्गेनाइज अ ओरिएंटेशन लेक्चर अ लेक्चर व्हिच विल मेक ऑल आवर वॉलेंटियर्स अवेयर अबाउट व्हाट इज एक्चुअली डाटा दी स्टेम सेल रजिस्ट्री एंड व्हाट हैपेंस एंड आई शुड नॉट स्पीक मोर ओवर ईयर बिकॉज क्लिमेट डॉक्टर क्लिमेट इज वेरी टेक्निकल पर्सन इन दिस and he will speak to all uh, volunteers and he is going to give knowledge to all of us today so uh, congratulations lala lajpat rai college for doing this uh, university is always there for doing good activities and you take a forefront in organizing all these activities so i should uh, thank uh, the district coordinator dr kranti uk for uh, taking the lead for organizing such kind of workshops and seminars and i also thank uh, mr klimet for being there yeah, after long time i am seeing him too um, so all students also i would like to thank you too for joining 
only remember is after listening to the lecture don't keep the knowledge to yourself kindly spread the knowledge to others too so somewhere or other we can come to help others okay and that is what is motive of nss this platform is to gain awareness as well as to give awareness to others so i would like to thank each and every one to being there be serious while listening to it don't keep your phones aside like what you do normally in your lectures ki ha kuch so sunne ka maine attend karne ka aisa mat kijiye listen to it it would be useful for you too okay so thank you kranti ma'am for giving me a chance to speak to all young people and uh, after long time i'm seeing um, clement for so i will enjoy his lecture too and thank you dr arora for uh, being so kind to use the platform of nss thank you very much jai hind all of you thank you thank you thank you dr sushil kinde and very nice of university collaborate with us thank you very much and looking forward to listening to dr clement yes and i mean i am not very well aware about exactly what is stem cell uh, registration so i think it will be a uh, very uh, eye opening for me thank you yes sir thank you thank you sushil sir uh, for sparing your uh, precious time i know you are uh, having a very busy schedule back to back uh, zoom calls and meetings uh, yes. but even then uh, you uh, take out some time took out some time for us so we are really thankful to you uh, so now uh, not taking much time uh, i take this opportunity uh, to introduce uh, our esteemed speaker for today uh, dr pravin clement uh, he is a transplant coordinator for marrow donor registry india and he handles the donor database and do the donor patient matching he also handles the stem cell collection from the donor when found as a match he is the ex blood bank officer for tata memorial hospital from department of transfusion medicine uh, he has done his mbbs uh, from mgm college uh, uh, of uh, medicine new bombay and uh, his pg from uh, cmc bellor uh, in family medicine he has also done his mba in healthcare management from wellinkers institute and he has been practicing for almost 21 years now uh, i would also like to uh, make a special mention uh, that he has been donating uh, his platelets regularly and uh, till date Uh, he has donated his platelets for 104 times so it's uh, really motivating and inspiring dr clement and uh, we are really fortunate to have you as our uh, speaker for today's uh, stem cell um, registration awareness program so looking forward to uh, hearing uh, to your enlightening uh, session and also i would like to uh, make an appeal to our nss volunteers Uh, as sushil sir also mentioned that uh, you uh, you don't have to just listen to uh, what is being told today but you have to be the brand ambassadors and you have to create awareness not among uh, not only among your uh, peers but also among the masses on this note i would like to invite dr pravin clement uh, uh, to kindly take over and address the gathering over to you sir unmute yourself sir so you are not audible uh pravin sir you are not audible so make him the co-host so that he can unmute himself no yeah he is the co-host ma'am okay okay अब भाई व्हाट्स द प्रॉब्लम मैम दैट शुड बी नेटवर्क इशू फ्रॉम सर सर 
Okay. Uh, Ma'am, sir needs to rejoin the meeting. I think he has a glitch. That's why he's not able to speak. He needs okay. to rejoin. So, yeah, yeah. You, you can log out and then log in again. Yeah. Are you logging in from your laptop? We can log in from two devices, you know, like one phone and speak on in the phone and show the presentation from the laptop. Maybe the laptop is not getting. Uh, Ma'am, actually, sir needs to use the headphones. Actually, he's not using the headphones. Uh, sir, try via headphones now if you are having your phone's headphones, anything. हेडफोन से क्या फर्क पड़ेगा मैम समटाइम्स ना द लैपटॉप डिवाइस डजंट कनेक्ट विद ज़ूम वी नीड टू डू दैट आल्सो देयर माइट बी एन ग्लिच ऑफ कनेक्शन वन मोर ऑप्शन इज यू लॉग इन फ्रॉम द लैपटॉप एंड फ्रॉम योर फोन सो लैपटॉप यू पुट ऑन म्यूट एंड स्पीक ऑन द फोन एंड प्रेजेंटेशन यू कैन शेयर so he will be made co-host on two devices that also works many times you can uh, make pc as uh, co-host also you so please log in from your mobile also dr clement so you will have two devices kranti madam yes sir ata ata awaz yel clement sir thank you पीसी म्हणून ते जॉईन झाले त्यांना अनम्यूट करायला सांगा फक्त सो यू प्लीज अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ कॅन यू हियर मी यस नाउ इट इज क्लियर ओके ग्रेट एंड कॅन यू सी मी आल्सो यस यस ओके परफेक्ट ओनली वन डिवाइस यू कीप इट ऑन म्यूट सो दैट वुड नॉट बी एन इको I meet. I uh, I'm muting my laptop. Uh, you mute your laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it correct? Now? Yeah. Otherwise, there will be an echo. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I think it's still like going for me. Can put your headphone in the laptop so the sound will not go out. Oh, oh. I actually I don't have a, a headphone uh, with me. make the volume bigger of uh, laptop so then once the volume you know there won't be an echo okay perfect perfect is it, is it correct now yeah better better yeah all right yeah. okay yeah so sorry for this <laughs> small glitch i'm not uh, so used to <laughs> this you are expert in something else sir so <laughs> <laughs> it's okay thank you so much sir <laughs> yeah so um since we are all set the first of all thank you all so much for having me over here and um, 
um it's, uh, it's an honor for me to be over here and you know meeting all of you all after like you know two years of uh, this pandemic otherwise i'm a regular at all these colleges and i get to meet all of you all and uh, thank you um, um uh, dr um, neela marora for having me over here sushil sir kanti ma'am uh, i know you all have been the anchors always for me to you know have these camps uh, in colleges and get me the permission for other colleges also so um, i'm here again to talk about stem cell uh, registration um, because it's always a two step process uh, there is a registration process first and then there is um, um, a sample collection so uh, today uh, since because of the pandemic we were held back for the camps and all we cannot collect the uh, blood samples for the registration so i'm here only to give an awareness Uh, about stem cell donation it's been 2 years that i've been to the colleges so most of the students uh, are unaware of what a stem cell uh, is and um, i'm here to enlighten them about the whole process and how simple it is and how all of you can be heroes in your lifetime uh, by donating stem cells for cancer patients and i'll just start um, um uh, video share about the ppt which i have can you all see the ppt yes yes all. sir okay great so um um so we are having this program for the first time after the pandemic so that you know all the colleges get introduced about stem cell uh, donation awareness and uh, that's why we gathered all the leaders of the nss and the colleges the uh, principal the professors so that they know about it and they can spread the word to their colleagues and the teams who organize the camps and we look forward to having a very overwhelming response in a few months from now when we have the camps in your respective colleges so um i'm the transplant coordinator with maro donor registry india and uh, we call it the mdri mdri is an organization it's an ngo which is funded by the tata trust and um, so it work, we work under the tata banner which is trying to help cancer patients as sushil sir said uh, very rightly that a cancer patient can have a uh, hope from uh, hope of cancer cure from donors like you all all of you all you young people college students can be a donor for a cancer patient now don't worry that you know it's a big donation or something it's a very simple process i'll let you know what it is so mdri is going to organize a stem cell donor drive soon in your college and today we are having the awareness about the stem cell donation so what is mdri marrow donor registry india is an ngo which was formed in 2009 with a vision to help needy patients mostly a blood cancer patient uh, mdri registers voluntary donors see all of you all can be a voluntary donor with the mdri there is no forcing all of you all can register yourself as a stem cell donor with us in the hope that you can cure someone's cancer so mdri has a database of voluntary donors who are already registered with us and uh, we function under the tata banner so what was the, why was this uh, organization started like what was the problem statement so the problem came up when um, we had uh, i am from tata memorial hospital and um, i used to treat cancer patients over there till 2009 so i was there for 10 years and the problem statement we came to know that um, uh there are many blood cancer patients who are only undergoing chemotherapy and radiation and so on but that is not a full hope of cure for these patients of course many of them get cured from chemotherapy but some of them who come to us in the last stages need a stem cell transplant from a donor like you so uh, how do we find the donor so there are many patients who are diagnosed with cancer every day who come to us looking for a match so the stem cell donation should come from a person who is a complete dna match now what is this so all of you as i said can be a donor for a cancer patient but the thing is you cannot donate randomly to any patient your stem cells and cure their cancer because your dna has to match with the patient's dna now as sushil sir said that you know blood donation is quite a simple process where you have to match only the blood group a group goes to a group b group goes to b group or an o group can donate to anyone something like that but here it is not so simple your dna has to match now all of us have a very unique dna it's very very rare you might have heard that you know our dna matches never matches with anyone it's not uh, completely true that it never matches there is a small possibility that it will match with someone and there is a uh, 25% chance that your dna will match with your own brother or sister okay 
so we try to match try a try to find a matching whenever a patient comes to us we try to match with the sibling the brother or the sister of the patient could be a good match and if at all they don't match then we look forward to a registry where there are donors already registered who can be a match for such kind of patients that's why we had to form a registry where we can register people like you all you know who are willing to donate their stem cells for such cancer patients and as i said it's one in four chances with their sibling and now it falls to one in 20000 when you are not related to the patient so all of you all will stand a 1 in 20000 chance that you match with someone so although 1 in 20000 we say there is still hope for these patients if we have a very large database every patient will find a matching donor so you can be a donor for these patients although possibility is 1 in 20000 it's not impossible hence if there are people willing to donate their stem cells for such kind of patients where do they look for that's where our registry was formed where all their names are registered with us of course they are all anonymized nobody will know who the donor is okay so we took the responsibility of registering voluntary donors the same way like i'm talking to you all today through the virtual meet um, before before the pandemic i used to go to colleges talk class to class uh, 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 Sushil sir and Kranti ma'am know that I am regular with them in their colleges, going class to class, talking about stem cell donation, and uh, they are completely counselled. They are given time; two three days are given to them so that they can go back home and they can talk to their parents and you know read about it, Google it, and know about the whole process. And another day is chosen for the registration process, where they will volunteer by giving a blood sample. Okay, that blood sample will be tested for your DNA. That's how we come to know if you match with the patient or not. So we'll take up a small oral registration process. Okay, we call it the CAM. Okay, and we do the DNA test. It's called an HLA test and um, human leukocyte antigen. That is what we require to see if you match with the cancer patient. And these donors are regularly checked to see if they match the, with the patient from whom we receive a search request every day. We receive a lot of searches every day from different patients around the around India and around the world. Okay. and uh, we receive about 7 to 8 patients per day so you can imagine the number of patients rising every day so how does the camp take place an enrollment process as you can see there is a small image of uh, a counseling session going on in a college classroom class to class after that there is a registration process where the donor has to fill up a form with all his contact details keeping in mind that for the next 30 years that is the only thing we have to trace you whenever you are found as a matching donor so you have to give in all your name age address telephone number email id alternate address alternate phone number if at all your primary number changes and so on and whenever you are a match we give you a call and the final step is that you give a small 4 ml blood sample with which we can do the dna test of course we are trying to change the process of giving the blood sample we might take a saliva sample also as you know dna is present in all over our body you can give a saliva sample also so we we are working on that so once we start again we let you know what we will be collecting but nevertheless the results will be the same and the donor will be acknowledged by a donor card which will go to his postal address which he has mentioned in the form that that completes his registration process okay as you can see this is a college counseling session going on Uh, we go class to class and talk to all the donors and give them the information we don't force them to register it is absolutely their voluntary uh, wish we go to colleges also where we uh, give a counseling session on the floor uh, co uh, corporate offices and um, the employees of the office are uh, uh, volunteer uh, they volunteer to register on the next day where we take the blood sample so who all can register as a donor so uh, as you know that blood donation can take place up to 65 even stem cell donation can take place up to 65 70 years also but the registration process for the for that the age should be between 18 to 50 only because we are trying to maintain a younger pool of donors so that you can be with us for a longer time that doesn't mean that the day you touch 50 you are out of the registry you are always with us even after 50 years but to maintain the pool of young donors 50 years is the cut off both genders are welcome there is no differentiation your weight should be above 50 kg and you should be in good health you should not have any major heart disease kidney disease liver disease or cancer itself and the most important thing is your willingness to come forward registration process is a very simple process where you just have to fill up a form and give a sample but you might be found as a match many years later or maybe the next month but that is the time you have to answer the call and come forward because you have been matched with a patient 
So what if a match is found? Our initial searches reveal if there is a preliminary match. If found, the donors are contacted and ask come to see if they are a perfect. So always, you know, since we do camps on a large scale, we, there should not be any mixing of the samples. So whenever you found a match, we take a fresh blood sample again. Make sure that you are that donor who has matched with the patient. And that is outsourced to another lab, which is in US. And we receive the report within a week and we let you know if you're a perfect match or not. And we always look for a perfect 10 by 10 match. Perfect 10 by 10 match means your DNA of your blood only should be a perfect 10 by 10 match. Okay, Not the whole body DNA that will never match with anyone. So only the blood parameter should be perfect 10 on 10. And yeah, so once you're a perfect match, you're going to play God. Okay, you're the only one who can save that patient's life. So you have to pass something called a fitness for donation also. So you will you'll undergo a health checkup from our side, totally free of cost, blood test, ECG, X-ray test, and ultrasonography abdomen to see if all your uh, body parts are working fine, your blood is in optimum level. If at all you find anything, we'll take care of it first and then we can take the donation also. So, you know, you might have a low hemoglobin or you might be on medication for blood pressure or diabetes and all. That doesn't matter. We can take care of that. We'll control them and then we can take the donation also. Of course, only major diseases are exempt from the donation process. And we presume that you will go ahead with the donation process and save the patient's life, adding many years to the quality of many quality years to that patient's life because you're that rare one in 20,000. You can make a lot of difference to that cancer patient. Remember, whenever a cancer patient is coming to us, they come to us mostly in their last stages. So they have about three to four months to live. Okay. And you're the only one who can extend that patient's life to, you know, old age. So you're the one. And a word of caution, of course, if you change your mind and back out, it will be very disastrous for the patient because, as I said, you're the only match. Okay. And so humble request to stay committed because it's a very simple process also, just like blood donation. Okay. It's a needle process, nothing else. So the pre-donation prep. So how do you prepare uh, if your founder is a perfect match and you have passed the fitness also? So you, you know that, uh, as I said, the stem cells is a part of your blood which is freely flowing inside your bone marrow. Bone marrow means the hollow part of your bones where your blood is being formed every day. You might not know that. Okay, We are, we are looking at that part of blood which is inside your bone. That's why previously we used to call it bone marrow. And that blood is in the immature stage. Okay, Immature blood, blood in the baby stage. That is what we are looking at, which we have to give to the patient. So how previously bone marrow donation was a different process where we actually had to go inside the bone to remove the bone marrow. I remember in uh, late 90s when I was in Tata Memorial Hospital, uh, we used to actually do this uh, invasive procedure. Of course, technology has changed. There is there is a wonder drug called growth factor, an injection which is given to the donor five days before the process, which will bring that required blood which I want into your peripheral blood. Okay, you will not know anything. On the fifth day, you just have to come to our blood bank, a needle is put in the arm and the collection is done. So uh, that injection is given on your tummy. Uh, it won't hurt you. Uh, I usually come to the donor's home and I give it myself. And uh, on the fifth day, the donation will take place. So once that stem cells, you know, which is encased in your bone marrow, on the fifth day, it is inside, it will be mixing with your blood now. Okay. So blood in your veins. Okay. Just like a blood donation. So it becomes easy for us to collect in a blood bank procedure. So as you can see, there is an image of a donor donating. Okay. On the fifth day, the donor comes to the blood bank and he donates his stem cells and he goes back home the same day. Okay, it doesn't, it's not a hospital procedure or anything that he has to stay in the hospital or get admitted or something. The donor has to lie down on a couch. Uh, it's a two needle process. One needle is put in each arm and the collection takes place. Don't worry, two needles means we are not drawing blood from both the arms. It's a special kit where blood will come out of only one arm. It will go into a kit. As you can see, there is a machine beside the donor. On the machine, a kit is installed. It's a disposable kit. The blood will go only into the kit. It spins up the blood, separates out only the required stem cells, and the remaining blood is returned back to, uh, to the donor through the other arm. There are two needles. So one is a draw line, one is a return line. The donor will not know anything. And at any point of time, only 100 ml of blood is outside the body. Okay, It goes into the kit and back. So it is your own blood and it is safe. It's a disposable kit. It doesn't come in contact with the machine or the atmosphere. Okay, So it is safe. At the end of the process, because it's a very drop by, slow drop-by-drop drop collection, the donor has to lie down for some time. It takes about two, three, two to three hours. And we collect only 200 ml of blood. 
okay that 200 ml of blood is rich in stem cells it looks like blood only okay there is no difference between a stem cell bag and a blood bag and that 200 ml rich in stem cells is given to the matched patient okay. this is one of our donors one of our very first donors a college student only and she was only 19 years old at that time when she volunteered she said yes for the donation and uh, she saved one patient's life the patient had about 6 months to live okay now that patient is free of cancer. Okay. No hospital admission required, and you can go back home the same day also. Okay. There is no admission required. So what does the donor go through as a donor? Okay, what does he feel? First of all, there is no pain. He is comfortably lying down watching a movie. Actually, okay, it's like a blood donor lying down on a couch. TV is in front of him. He can attend calls, can read a book or something. Okay, absolutely free. And the procedure takes about three hours, so, so it might get a little boring. So, you know, they're given uh, music and all to listen to, TVs, their remote is in his hand. Most of the donors do not have any complaints, but some of the donors might complain of a little body ache on the third or fourth day of the injection. The thing is, see, this injection is given to make your bone marrow work a little more than other days. So since your bones are working a little more to produce those stem cells, you might feel a little body ache. Of course, we take care of that with, by giving you a medicine called paracetamol, okay, which everybody knows, crocin. Okay, that's all that is required. Now, the common, the better drug is called Dolo. Okay, so after the donation, refreshments are given, of course, like any blood donation, and then you can go back home immediately. No rest required. So how does the stem cell work? You know, previously it was such a difficult process. Cancer does not have any cure. And suddenly you just donate 200 ml of blood and it can cure someone's cancer. It's very hard to believe something like this, but it is true. So what's happening is, uh, taking the patient's scenario, the patient is having blood cancer, means his bone marrow is formed. Okay, so bone marrow where his normal blood should be formed is not forming normal blood, it's forming abnormal blood. So, what we do is we are trying to destroy that abnormal blood forming entity in the patient's body. We destroy it completely and we take the same part from you, the stem cells, which is given to the patient. Now, since you are a perfect DNA match with the patient, it's going to go in his body and act like his own. And it will replace all his cancer cells with your good cells. The thing is, it's actually cheating his body, it's cheating the patient's body, saying that it's his own, and it will start to accept. Once it's accepted, it will start to multiply. It will replace all his cancer cells with your good cells, multiplying for the rest of his life, curing his cancer completely. So it's like planting a seed, you know, remove the bad roots of an old plant and put a new seed, and it will start growing new cells. But you're a normal person. So from now on, Everything in that patient's body will form normally and he's cured of his cancer. So a job well done. What you did was just a very simple thing actually, but it is priceless for the patient. A one-time donation of just 200 ml of blood stem cells can cure someone's cancer permanently. You have extended the life of a patient, mostly a small child by many years. Now you might have not heard. The thing is most of the patients who come to us are small children small children with blood cancer who are going to die in the next six to seven months. But if a match is found, that patient, that child will live up to old age just because of you. Okay. So uh, register and come forward and cure someone's cancer. Okay. And at the same time, what have you lost? You have lost nothing. Okay. You just donated blood and it's formed in your body within a few hours. You know, blood is, you know, it's like a, a wonderful thing. You donate it's formed in your body within a few hours. It's replaced always. Okay, You'll never go out of blood. Okay, Our body has the tendency to keep forming blood all our life. And of course, you can always live with the euphoria that you have saved someone's life just by donating 200 ml of blood. So how important is your commitment? Once registered, the donor has the full right to back out anytime he wants. Okay, This is a voluntary act. You are coming forward to save someone's life. But of course, it is always your decision if you want to stay on the registry. And um, or not, okay. You can always back out anytime you want. There is no compulsion. However, it would be sad for us to know if, if your name has to be removed from the registry because we will be losing one donor, of course. And if you're there on the database, you'll be. You might get a call maybe in the next twenty to thirty years when you are found as a match, or maybe never. Okay, you might be there on the database all your life, but you might never get a call. But if a donor is chosen as a match for a patient in desperate need, he is the only one who can save that patient's life. The thing is, our registry is very small. We have about 50,000 donors only with us. And most of them are college students like y'all. And all these 50,000 students cannot you know, 
cure someone's cancer all the time because they have to match. So we need a big registry with big number of donors. So finding a match itself is difficult. But if a match donor backs out, the hopes of the patients are shattered. Okay. Of course, we don't let the patient know that you know we have found a donor and you know um, he is going to donate without asking the donor first. We always ask the donor first that you know are you willing? Then we tell the patient that you know there is a donor who is ready. We don't reveal the identity. Okay, uh, there is a donor who is ready for you, and you might be cured of cancer very soon. So register with a long term commitment. So uh, humble request to be committed. All the time. Commitment means coming forward the day you get a call. Simple as that. When you get a call, means you have already matched someone. Okay. And there is a patient who may be a small child who is in his last stages of cancer who is dependent only on your donation. You're a rare one in 20,000. Registry being small, as I said, you might be the only match. It all comes down to you. You say yes, the patient lives. You say no, the patient might die very soon. But at the same time, for you, it's a very simple act of just donating blood, you know, sparing three hours. Um, you might have many questions re related to this. Is it a safe procedure? Yes, absolutely. We've been doing this for about 40 years now, and um, it's a time-tested procedure. About 1.2 million procedures all over the world. Okay, all the donors are doing well. Everybody is safe. Everybody is happy, and no uh, bodily harm or anything. Okay, there are no side effects to the growth factor injection. Some of y'all might feel a little headache or body ache on the second or third day. Otherwise, there is no uh, major side effects to it and no loss to the don donor also as you know uh, organ donation is something you know you have to donate and that part of the organ is gone this is stem cells it's blood it's formed in your body within a few hours so you're not losing anything and the donor no does not need any hospitalization bed rest medication or a special diet after the procedure is over and you might have the apprehension that you know my blood has come out and it is going back in and is it uh, carrying any contaminants with it? Not at all. It's a disposable kit. It is your own blood, first of all, being returned back to you. Second thing is that it goes through a disposable kit, which is a safe kit, you know, sterilized kit. Okay. So safe blood, safe procedures we follow. Okay. The needle is also disposable. And after the procedure is over, the whole kit is broken and incinerated. That is, it's burnt off. So... How many patients were benefited out of these 50,000 donors? Only 15. Okay. But at the same time, we can proudly say that when the possibility of match is one in 20,000, out of 50,000 donors, we found 15 matching donors. And all these 15 have donated. Most of them are college students like y'all. And they have saved cancer patients. And out of the 15 patients, uh, I believe 11 were children, four were adults. Okay. Seven female donors, eight male donors, 14 were for Indian patients, one international patient also. So we have reached out across the world also, and we have helped patients everywhere. All the products were shipped to the patient within 24 hours. There was no delay in time from our side. So some trivia about uh, registries. As um, uh, you know, uh, India is lagging behind in the registry process, uh, but we'll get there soon. Uh, US has the biggest registry. They have 81 lakh donors with us. Uh, when, we, when we have 50,000 donors, they have 81 lakh donors with them. In Germany, uh, it is compulsory to register as a donor. The day you touch 18 years, there is no counseling, there is no uh, consent or anything. They just uh, force you that you have to register yourself. Otherwise, no um, government-related uh, documents will be given to you, like uh, something like an Aadhaar card or something or a social security number and all will not be given to you there, until you register as a stem cell donor. So there it is uh, a compulsion and they have 21 lakh donors it's a small country but a big pool of donors are already there uh the human dna is very race specific race specific means an indian will match an indian an american will match an american so even though us has 81 lakh donors and they are willing to help us it is not going to help us in any way because their dna is different from us and it will not match with them so an indian registry with indian donors registered in them is the need of the hour the blood group of the patient will change to the blood group of the donor irrespective of what it was before. So now here in stem cell donation, blood group does not matter. Matching is not required. Mostly, most of our transplants which we have done are mismatches. And the uh, thing which you have never heard is that the patient's blood group will change to the donor's blood group after one month. Okay, And we give them a document also saying that, you know, the, for the government uh, records, 
patients that this patient blood group is now this which is very odd to hear okay unbelievable blood group matching is not required for such procedures getting a chance to donate once in your lifetime is very rare as i said you know 1 in 20000 and there are some lucky people who have donated twice uh, for two different patients so amount donated is less than the regular blood donation so you donate blood regularly in these college camps and all you donate 350 or 450 ml but stem cell donation you need to donate only 200 ml of blood you will never be a perfect match with your parents we always feel that you know dna uh, matches with the family and as i said your sibling will be a 25% match then why not parents the thing is your parents will always be a 50% match only with you just for the simple reason is that you share 50% dna from mother 50% dna from father so you'll never be a full match with them and remember you will be called maybe once in your lifetime in the next 20 or 30 years okay please consider the dying patient's condition who is only dependent on your stem cells as i said when you get a call means you have already matched someone so you're the only match and <clears throat> you can always imagine there is a cancer patient who is dependent on me why not i spare 3 hours 200 ml of blood and cure that cancer you might probably be the only one please come forward and donate for that patient at the time of need so this this line i always ask how many of you all would like to be a donor now if i am in a classroom and i take a head count okay this is virtual so i don't need you all to do that so i have um, um some i always gather pictures taken in the camps so this is a big set of pictures taken at lala lajpatrai college in 2018 <clears throat> where volunteers are like you know so so enthusiastic to register um, the donors who come in they are filling their forms and <clears throat> the principal always makes a visit and um, uh, this is how the blood collection takes place the bottom right uh, <clears throat> our technician is collecting a blood sample from a volunteer donor so these are our contact details we have phone numbers we have an email id you can always ask us if you have any uh, queries and um, you can always um, refer patients to us also if there is a need and um, we are always there to help and all of this will be done free of cost to the patient <clears throat> only logistics will be charged which is um, uh, not much otherwise transplant is absolutely free for the patient so that was me dr pravin clement uh, transplant coordinator for marrow donor registry india and uh, that finishes my uh, ppt session and now i'm open to um, questions if you all have any please i would like you all to ask some questions yeah yeah dr clement i think uh, it was a very very uh, emotional uh, presentation by you we always think ke hamare liye koi kuch karega but we are hesitating always to do for others so i don't know i wish um, many of our young students would come forward and register and save life maybe usme hum logon ki bhi koi life kabhi bhi ho sakti hai we never know so students but ask your parents take their permission if they permit only then you register yes. and irrespective of any of your being a donor with us or not okay we are always there to help you all uh when there is a need so please uh, feel free to call us any time so we'll be happy to help uh, any of you <clears throat> i think there are no doubts <laughs> yeah Yeah, yeah. Now, now I can see one question. Is there uh, a registry or branch? Uh, I hope you can see the question. Yes, yes, I can see. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. there a registry or branch in district places? Uh, or some places outside who can collect blood samples? Uh, as of now, this project has been started only in Mumbai. Uh, so we don't have any collection center outside Mumbai. but we are soon working on it to enroll uh, district blood banks where the donor can walk into any blood bank and uh, register as a voluntary donor they just have to fill up a form there and uh, give the blood sample 
or the saliva samples. So slowly we'll be switching over to saliva sample. So we are working on that. And we'll definitely let you all know when that will happen. Because of the pandemic, we have a few restrictions to go across the city, uh, travel restrictions with DNA samples across the borders and all. So we are not doing it right now. But um, we are just getting all the clearances required. And once it is done, we'll definitely let you all know. We will not let you down on becoming a donor with us. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> someone has asked for the PPT. Uh, I will uh, share it with uh, uh, Kranti ma'am uh, so that um, y'all can show it to your parents also. I'll share the pamphlet also, which we share with the parents and the students. Um, it looks like this. <clears throat> yeah. So I'll send you all the soft copy and um, y'all can share it with your parents also. <clears throat> yeah, there is a very good question. How is it that DNA matches the person who is not our blood relative? So as I said, you might be a good match, the best match with your own brother or sister, which is 25% chances because you, you are from the same parents. Now, the best match in the whole world is a twin brother or a sister, okay? Same DNA, okay? <clears throat> now, one in 20,000 chances that your DNA will match randomly with someone who's not known, not known to you, okay? There is a possibility that someone will match in spite of he not being your blood relative or anything. That is because <clears throat> our blood DNA is only matched with the patient. We are not looking at the whole body DNA. Our whole body DNA is made up of about 3,000 characters. Okay, That will never match same to same with anyone. But for the blood, we have characterized 20 points out of the 3,000. That is enough to match. And they will match uh, in a rare possibility of 1 in 20,000. So there is a match. Now, the other theory behind that is um, there is a rare chance or you know maybe not studied properly that an unknown person who has matched you might if you trace back their generation about six to seven generations back there might be some connection okay so that is uh, some homework which you can do actually <laughs> but <clears throat> trace back who your donor was or your, who your patient was so that can happen um you know, our forefathers were, you know, related, something like that. <clears throat> uh, is it possible to alter the patient's WBC in such a way that they can kill cancer cells? <clears throat> um, the question uh, has an answer. You, you don't alter the WBC, actually. WBC cannot be altered. But once the stem cell procedure is over, uh, what happens is the donor can donate for that patient after three months with a high load of WBC only for the patient. So that is called graft versus leukemia, where the donor's WBC can kill the cancer cells of the patient. It's like, you know, uh, it's just an immune factor, nothing more. Uh, we cannot alter it, but we can prime them to kill the cells. You know, select one kind of WBC and load it into the patient. I hope uh, I could answer that, Shravani. Holy. Uh, how may I register? Is there any Google form? Um, Kranti, ma'am, uh, I think uh, you'll have some uh, Google form uh, through the college. Uh, sir, uh, in our feedback form, we have just uh, uh, asked their willingness whether they want to register for uh, uh, stem cell uh, donation. And right. uh, what what we plan further is to have a meeting with all the program officers of our district, that is Mumbai City first, uh, right. where, uh, where we can discuss uh, about how to go about uh, the camps. 
because I think uh, soon uh, we will be opening everything. Uh, you you are the better person to let us know about that. Uh, yes. But uh, uh, before that, you know, before having the camps, we can circulate uh, these Google forms, uh, taking willingness from the students, uh, not only restricting it to the NSS volunteers, from all the students and whatever numbers we are having through those Google forms, we can arrange a camp for them college wise. So exactly. uh, before that, we need to first discuss it with all the program sure. officers. Yeah. And no. after that, we can go for this Google Forms. Yes. Yeah. Is there any possibility of getting fraud calls in the name of a match? And if yes, how to identify? <clears throat> Yeah, that's a very good question. In fact, uh, this last uh, two years when we were in the pandemic, we reached out to all our 50,000 donors just to say hi to them and if they are still you know, willing to be a donor with us. And many of them you know, were not uh, very comfortable to answer our questions because we were calling from our mobile phones. And you know they were not really sure who is calling us. They know that they are registered with us as a donor. But is the caller a genuine person? So the best possible way is that... <clears throat> First of all, you'll get a donor card, okay? In that, your unique identity number is there. It's a 12-digit identity number, which is recognized all over the world. That is first thing. So whenever the caller calls you, you can have that card and match it, and the caller will let you know if that's, that number is yours. And that is limited to only the people who call from our office, and that is hardly four or five people, not more than that. So only... The employees of MDRI will know what your donor ID is and no one else. So that is one way to confirm. Second thing is that you can always ask the caller to send, tell him to send your actual filled up handwritten form as, a, as an email to the email ID which you have given us. So you don't have to reveal your email ID also. We already have it. So through that email, we'll send it to you with your okay so two very good proof we have that you know a genuine person is calling so uh, no fraud can take place okay you have to be proactive from your end i appreciate you asking that question also and this is what we follow so we send them a scan copy of their uh, filled up form with the date when they registered lala lajpatrai college name everything you all have to fill up so it's always there <clears throat> What is the procedure of preserving stem cells for self? Um, yes, the, that is a possibility, but uh, our country is not so rich for that right now. Uh, the possibility is there that you can donate your own stem cells and keep it for you for a later date. You know, that's what these cord blood banking do. You know, the bank the child's cord blood, keep it in the bank. Say, God forbid, a child develops a cancer maybe in the next 10, 20 years, it can be given to that same child. So same way we can do that for us. But we are adults. So when we donate stem cells, we are donating 200 ml of stem cells, which is a big bag. That has to be preserved at, you know, minus 180 degrees for lifelong, say 60, 70 years, maybe 100 years, which, which you would prefer. And that will cost you at least uh, 40 to 50 lakhs because it has to be stored at, you know, sub-zero temperature lifelong. And nobody should open that box regularly. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> nitrogen cylinders are required, which are very, very expensive. So cost is the factor. But yes, you can do it if uh, a facility is available that way. Yeah. So like whenever we are called, uh, will we have to nearby hospital or there is another procedure? Yes. Mostly a nearby hospital only. Uh, depends where you stay. If you're in Mumbai, we have all the hospitals, uh, major hospitals registered with us. Induja, Piranandani, Tata Memorial Hospital in Navi Mumbai and Parel, uh, Raija Hospital in Mahi, uh, Jaslok Hospital. All these are centers for us to do the collection. So we can arrange something which is feasible for you. We prefer Tata Memorial Hospital because uh, their expertise is very high. <clears throat> so we always do it there. Yeah. How is the matching done? Is there any software? Yes, we have a software where um, the donor's DNA and the patient's DNA are fed into the database. The, the patient's DNA is only fed, donor's DNA is already there in the database. 
So you, we just have to feed in. It's like an alphanumeric data. Put it up and hit search. And uh, within a few minutes, the it searches all the fifty thousand donors. Within seconds, the result is out. After the procedure is done, when can we donate blood? So once you have donated stem cells, you can donate blood after four months. Okay. So four months is the gap which we have capped for uh, for your regular blood donations after the stem cell donation. Otherwise, between two blood donations, it's still three months. <clears throat> Any other questions? I think uh, there are no more questions now. Everything is clear. So thank you so much, sir, uh, for uh, a very enlightening and informative talk. Uh, in a very lucid manner, you have very well explained about all the aspects of stem cell registration and donation and the need uh, to increase the database. Uh, it's really overwhelming to know that just 200 ml of our blood stem cells uh, can save someone's life, uh, where the possibility of match is only one in 20,000. Uh, so uh, you also spoke about uh, how, how important is our commitment. And uh, we really feel uh, that uh, uh, the youth, the students uh, of this country has uh, a very important, to, uh, important role to play in this. And uh, therefore, I, I want to appeal all uh, our NSS volunteers, first of all, uh, to be uh, the agents of change and to create more awareness uh, uh, among their colleges, uh, among their friends and uh, among the masses uh, also. Uh, so that our data base is increased and we uh, we get more donors, more willing donors for stem cell donation. Uh, as you mentioned that uh, during the pandemic, uh, uh, you were calling all uh, 50,000, uh, you know, <laughs> the potential stem cell donors. I was also one of them and I was so happy to get a call from MDRI. I thought that uh, in the recent future, I may get a call, uh, but then I'm still waiting. So uh, I will be very fortunate if uh, I get a chance uh, like this. So uh, thank you so much once again, sir, for uh, uh, sparing your precious time, uh, time and being with us uh, today. And we will be in touch and we will be uh, a, a associated uh, for uh, the rest of the period uh, so that we can create uh, more stem cell donors uh, through these camps and uh, through these awareness activities. So thank you so much once again. On this note, uh, I would uh, like to propose the formal vote of thanks uh, for this uh, webinar. First of all, uh, I would like to thank, uh, of course, our uh, uh, dynamic resource person uh, for accepting this invitation and uh, creating awareness uh, about the very crucial topic. Uh, and uh, uh, we can see the responses also that uh, more than 450 students uh, have participated in this. Uh, so uh, I think this is uh, this is a grand success. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm very thankful to you. Uh, I would also like to express my uh, gratitude uh, to our principal, Dr. Neela Marora, ma'am, and our management uh, for providing us with all the resources uh, and for their constant support and guidance to conduct such activities. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank uh, our director, uh, Dr. Sudhir Puranik, sir, also the registrar of University of Mumbai, uh, Mr. Ramesh Devkar, sir, program officer, NSSL University of Mumbai, uh, Sushil Shinde, sir, uh, OSD and uh, district coordinator in Mumbai Western Zone uh, for uh, always giving us the permissions to conduct these programs at the university level and also for their constant support. I would also like to thank the teaching and non-teaching uh, staff of uh, Lala Lajpat Rai College uh, for uh, their cooperation. Uh, I would 
also like to thank uh, the program officers uh, uh, of uh, various colleges across University of Mumbai for encouraging these many volunteers uh, to attend this uh, webinar at a very short notice. Uh, so thanks to all the program officers. And uh, the success of the program, of course, depends upon the number of participants. And we have uh, such a huge number of participants. So I would like to thank all our NSS volunteers, uh, the participants to this webinar uh, for their enthusiastic presence and for, uh, for participating in this uh, event in large numbers. Uh, thank you so much uh, to all my dear uh, NSS volunteers. Last but not the least, I would like to thank uh, uh, my team uh, NS, uh, my team of volunteers from Lala Lajpat Rai College for taking all the efforts to organize and execute uh, this program uh, seamlessly. So thank you so much, uh, especially the technical team. And thank you so much, Jyoti Singh, uh, for uh, your last minute entry and uh, saving us as, uh, as always. So thank you so much, everyone. And uh, I think the feedback link is posted in the group uh, in the chat box. So you can uh, just fill up the feedback forms and that would be your attendance uh, uh, as well. So I request all of you to kindly fill the feedback form and then only leave this meeting. Thank you so much, everyone. And I would now like to request all of you to kindly switch on your camera so that we can have uh, a group photo, a virtual uh, group photo for this program. I hope I'm visible. I request everyone to please switch on your cameras. Abhay, after uh, clicking the picture, please let us know. Abhay, is it done? Yes, ma'am, done, ma'am. It's done? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Praveen. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll be in touch and we'll, uh, we'll just hold a meeting with all the program officers uh, to take the consent and to take the willingness from the students uh, so that we can soon organize the camp as well in yeah. our so colleges. we can have this session which i had just now with the individual colleges also yes Again, yes yes after that college. meeting they can yeah yeah they can uh, just coordinate with you and uh, at their individual college levels uh, they can organize it for uh, the whole college because now uh, we were having only nss volunteers with correct, us correct. yes yes but we so need we to, to reach out to, to each and every student right yes exactly. yeah. okay thank you everyone thank you, thank you so much for your time Thank you, sir. I request everyone to kindly fill the feedback forms before leaving. Shall I leave the meeting, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, All you right. can. Yeah. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Sir. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Jyoti, are you there? Vikas, is Jyoti, ma'am, there? No, I think she's not there. No, ma'am. Okay, okay, fine. Okay. Those who have filled the feedback forms, they can leave the meeting. Where is our team? Where is our team? Abhay, Siddesh, Vikas. 
I can't see you. Okay, so Vikas is there. Rest others we don't know. Abhay is not in the meeting or what? No, no ma'am, Abhay left. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah, he had to leave. He had to go somewhere. Okay, so Siddesh, uh, who is the host? Ma'am, you are the host. Okay, fine. I'm going to give you feedback and just end the meeting. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, so shall I leave now? Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much once again, everyone. Welcome, okay. Man. Yeah. Okay.
Has everyone filled up the Google form? Should we end the meet? Hello.